MG have seen a massive resurgence in the last decade, with their affordable cars selling incredibly well, with them opening up to markets previously untouched by British brands. Their success is tainted by the way in which they have risen from the dead, but they look to have a bright future in the EV world. MG was formed as a means of promotion for Morris Garages, a showroom and service centre in Oxford. It began with the manager Cecil Kimber modifying Morris Oxfords. A separate company was formed in 1930 and it was incorporated into William Morris's holding company, Morris Motors Limited. This company was part of the Nuffield organisation which was owned by Mr Morris. In 1952 the organisation merged with Austin form the British Motor Corporation. This company was then part of a merger to form the now infamous British Leyland Motor Corporation. This enterprise featured famous marks such as Jaguar, Rover, Land Rover and Mini. The company had a 40% market share at the time of formation but troubles were around the corner. I can't go into all of these in this video. If you would like to see a full video on the demise of British Leyland and ultimately British car manufacturers, please let me know. The business was essentially nationalised in 1975 under the Labour government and a major restructure occurred. The company was renamed to the Austin Rover Group and the Rover Group as the Austin name was dropped. Many brands were sold such as Jaguar and Land Rover to Ford. The overall business became a subsidiary of British Aerospace in 1988 before being sold to BMW. So where were MG in all of, in all of this mess? Kimber left the brand in 1941 and they began to make rebranded Wolseley and Morris cars. Most models were again rebadged apart from a few sports cars which was what the brand became known for thanks to models such as the multiple generations of midgets, the MGA and the MGB and their variants. There were no new models in the 70s except a limited edition V8 MGB. The Abingdon factory was closed in 1980 with a lot of uproar. From 1982, the brand was used for sportier models of the Metro, Maestro and Montego. The brand returned in 1992 with the MG RV8, which was an updated version of the MGB Roadster. The mid-engined MGF was launched in 1995 and was successful as it was one of the best-selling best convertibles in the UK and helped to bring some excitement back to the brand. The MG brand also made versions of the Rover ZR, ZT and ZS. In 2000, MG Rover was sold to the Phoenix Consortium who formed the MG Rover Group. BMW provided the group with an interest free loan but the company were already facing big losses due to ageing models and relatively niche cars. BMW were happy to ditch the brand as they accepted just £10. Phoenix couldn't find the brand to partner with and the business's money ran out. Alchemy offered to buy the brand and focus on MG sports cars and stop the Rover brand. This was disliked by those representing the employees and was declined. Production was suspended on the 7th of April 2005 after the group went into receivership. On the 22nd of July 2005, the Nanjing Automobile Group purchased the rights to the brand as well as other assets. New company NAC MG UK was formed. In 2007, the first MGs made in China were revealed, being the MGTF, 3SW, and 7. The 3SW was a rebadged version of the Rover Streetwise, and the 7 was based on the Rover 75 and MGZT. Production of the TF resumed at Longbridge later that year. Nanjing Automobile were bought out by SAIC Motor and the brand was renamed to MG Motor. The first all new MG in 16 years was launched in 2011 was the MG6, a family saloon. It received mixed reviews and didn't hit UK sales targets so was pulled from production in 2016. The TF finished production in 2011 due to poor sales although MG didn't sell many cars at the start of their new beginning anyway. The MG3 was launched in 2011 and really helped the brand in its new beginning. It featured a new chassis with new suspension. It had the choice of a manual or AMT transmission, which is where the driver changes the gear but does not need to use a clutch. It was also available in a crossover style. 
There was a slight facelift in 2013 with small styling changes. There was another update in 2018 which included a new interior. All models now come with a 1.5 litre engine and a 4 speed automatic gearbox. MG's range is now mainly crossovers and this began with the GS in 2015. It was one of the first MGs sold in the UK to be made in China with assembly taking place in Shanghai. There was a choice of two petrol engines with a 1.5 litre and a 2 litre but only the 1.5 was available in the UK. Sales were decent up until 2019 when production ended due to its replacement by the HS. MG's second crossover, the ZS, was launched in 2018 and is the best selling model in international markets. An electric version of the ZS EV was launched alongside the petrol model and is also known as the EZS in China. A hybrid version called the VS launched in Thailand in 2022. It has sold extremely well for the brand, selling over 150,000 in 2021 in China alone. The HS began production in 2018 with a range of petrol engines. The EHS is a hybrid version, with MG's all-new powertrain comprising of a 1.5 litre turbo four-cylinder and a 90 kWh motor alongside a 16.6 kWh battery. The HS has been a massive success for the brand, being the UK's best-selling car in January 2023 and the fourth best-selling car so far this year. Since 2019, the MG5 name has been used for rebadged versions of the Rho i5. Europe received an electric version in 2020 and the MG SW EV was marketed as the first electric estate car in the UK. In 2022, the brand revealed the MG4 EV. It is a small electric family hatchback with interesting specs. It is claimed to have a 50-50 weight distribution and it has a low centre of gravity. It has a one-pack battery system which helps to keep the battery compact. It can also gain 124 miles of range from 5 minutes of charging and reach 80% charge within 15 minutes. It is said to be targeting Europe as its main market and looks to take on the VW ID3 in the electric hatchback space. Under SAIC Motor, they have managed to launch an impressive number of vehicles in a short span of time. I haven't even mentioned some vehicles that are aimed at China and other Asian markets. These include the second generation MG6, the V80 van, and SUVs like the RX5, Hector, Gloucester and Astor, although most of these are rebranded Rose, Maxuses and Belgians due to the plethora of brands owned by SAIC. The brand have found success after straying from what they were known for, which was British sports cars and performance models. Their mainstream appeal and relative affordability have seen their new models become popular, especially in Britain. They have a great market share in China and other countries like Thailand and Chile, which they wouldn't have been able to sell cars in if it weren't for the takeover. They may return to their roots however, with the Cybuster concept, which was shown off in 2021. It is an electric convertible sports car with pop-up headlights, scissor doors and union jacks and the taillights. There have been rumours about a possible production model ever since and will apparently be launched in Thailand later this year, but nothing has been confirmed. A supposed leak from China's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology showed plans for single motor and dual motor versions. MG themselves say it should arrive in the UK this time next year. MG look to be in a great position moving forwards into the world of electric vehicles, which seem to be inevitable. They have three fully electric models, the 4, 5 and the electric version of the ZS. There is also a plug-in hybrid HS. With the 4 starting at just under 27,000, they have already established themselves at the cheaper end of electric vehicles, and with the 3 starting at less than £14,000. I think that it will be a great next step into EVs as it could challenge the electric VW up and smart EQ42, although I believe it will be better value due to the added space and having decent space behind the driver. It could well be the UK's cheapest EV behind the Citroen Ami of course, and I think electric systems make the most sense in compact city cars like the 3. I believe that China will begin to dominate the EV market going forwards and the acquisition of MG has greatly improved the reputation of Chinese vehicles and the brand could be a gateway for other 
Chinese brands to make their way into Europe, European markets, such as BYD, who have made their first forays into the Western markets. MG's reversal of fortunes in the last decade has been incredible, from going bankrupt less than 20 years ago, to producing just a few hundred cars a year just over 10 years ago, to having the fourth best selling car in the UK to date, and cementing themselves as an affordable and reliable brand. It really shows that having the right owners and a clear vision is really the only way to succeed in such a competitive industry, and with the return of sports cars to the company, the future is looking bright for MG.